Hey, I'm Reggie Ponder, The Real Critic, and this is The Real Critic Roundtable, where African-American critics come to discuss, debate, and have some fun. As usual, I have my friends here, but before we get to that, you might not be able to see this, but I am wearing my, um, let, 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 let me zoom out just a little bit here. I am wearing my USA shirt, if you can't see. I'm wearing my USA um, shirt for the Olympics, and, and this is in tribute to Simone Biles. I know we're a movie show, but I can't ignore the fact that Simone understood that she was under this pressure and she took care of herself before she took care of the country. She took care of herself before she took care of the sport. And I know I, I was upset because I really wanted her to win. I was pulling for her. I wanted to be out there to win. But she might not have won a gold medal, but she absolutely is winning in life. So I want to send a lot of support to Simone Biles. With that, I'll get to my guest in the house. I got KB back through the lens of Lady KB. If you don't know, you need to ask somebody. She got stuff going all the time. And I'm usually not jealous. I've told you guys this before. I'm mean, like, I, what's yours is yours. But I'm jealous because if she get one more interview with anybody that has anything to do with Ted Lasso, she and I are gonna have a fight. But welcome to the show, <laughs> KB. Thanks for having me back, Reggie. Yes, listen, well, I guess you're gonna be mad because another one's dropping today. <laughs> All right, tell us, what, tell us what you got going, KB. Yeah, so um, shout out, you know, I just wanna say yes, I absolutely support Simone. And quite frankly, I don't think she needed a reason. If she just said simply, I don't wanna do this, I don't want to do it is enough. So shout out to her for, you know, kind of prioritizing herself. We as Black women uh, need to do that more often. And it needs to be understood that we need rest as well. But yes, it is Tad Lasso Friday, as I'm affectionately calling it. There's a new episode that dropped today, season two, episode two. And my interview with Phil Dunster, who plays Jamie Tart, will be out later today for The Beat. Uh, also, there is a new Black rom-com on Netflix called Resort to Love. And I got to interview the three leads. So, uh, you know, Christina Milian, Jay Farrow, and Cinqua Walls. So those interviews are out as well for Nerdophiles. Well, excellent, excellent. You always got some good stuff out there. I'm, I'm good with the last three. I'm just not good with that that first one. So <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I also here is my friend Katia Woods. It's CupOfSoulShow.com and the Philadelphia Tribune. Uh, you know, she got it going on. She's doing stuff all the time. And 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 what's it really interesting? If y'all don't know, she does music. She does. Uh, movies, but not she writing on anything. She writing on cooking. She writing on, matter of fact, she had some tweets this week that she was going off on some other stuff, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. But that's my girl, Katya Woods. What you got going, Katya? Well, it's been, you know, it's been an interesting week. Um, uh, I will be dropping my interview for Viva, which is a film coming out on Netflix, which I absolutely love and I think it's adorable. And in light of everything going on with the Cuban people, it's nice to talk also about the culture in a positive way. And, you know, may they get what they need in order to move forward as a country. That ain't, you know, I'm with whatever they need. We are here to support you, you folks on, on the state side. Also, well, unfortunately, you know, some people said some unfortunate things at a show. So I had written an article for a concert that was starring Shardy, uh, Wyclef, um, Snow the Product, and, you know, uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff and DJ Diamond Cuts, who are from Philly. We all know who Jeff is. Had a chance to talk to Jeff, which was amazing. He was an awesome interview. Really, really love him and rooting for him. Uh, it's nice to hear people really open up and really talk about the issues. Um, also got a chance to talk to DJ Active, who is Janet Jackson's tour DJ, and he's also from West Philly. But again, due to the baby wanting to be a whole child this week, that's the nicest way that I can keep a family life. Uh, I have to rewrite my article because he got booted. He's been getting booted left and right, and rightfully so, you know what I mean? What is it saying? It's freedom of speech, not freedom of consequences. But I'm happy to be here with my buddies to talk movies and not to talk crazy people. 
Hey, well, great, great to have you guys. Um, look, we had a couple of movies that we had slated to talk about, and I think we're going to start with the color green. I'd rather be seen in green. So, <laughs> Katya, bring us in here. This is The Green Knight, starring my guy, Dev Patel, who is just, you know, I am, I am all the way team Dev. I am so glad that he had a career after Slumdog Millionaire. Because, you know, like to put people of color and they'll let you shine once. And he is shining in this. Like, he is the whole movie. It's about a, no, he's not a knight. He's not a knight, but he's on a quest to become a knight. And he inadvertently got himself, you know, he stepped up when no one else is, did, and he got involved in a challenge. And he has to go through a lot in order to face this challenge. But what makes this movie so compelling for me is that it is really about learning about who you are, what your values are, your boundaries. Why are you doing this? You know what I mean? The key word for him was honor. It wasn't about money. It wasn't about being seen. It's about honor. And, you know, and it's, he really carries his movie because you are, you're rooting for him. You know what I mean? Now I will say this, if you are a person who doesn't like knights, medieval times, that type of stuff, um, lots of dialogue, um, moments of like solace where you're basically relying on the cinematography in order to tell the story, then this is probably not your cup of tea. It's A24, so you know you're not getting Dungeon and Dragons. You're getting a little bit more. It's based also on a book. But I enjoyed this, you know? I had to kind of like marinate on this. Uh, I, and here's a side story. I was supposed to see it on Tuesday. Screening was crazy. Like the print looked like something out of Tetris. Other people have problems with your screenings too. So. My publicist made an arrangement for me to see it yesterday, seven o'clock, so I can be here to talk about it and, you know, get it, write my review. But it was worth the wait. I had to really think about it for a little bit because it's not one of those movies where you go, yay! And it's like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it's a good oh. All right, uh, KB. Yeah, so I really, really enjoyed this film. So first off, I'm just going to say one thing. When they ask us critics after a screening to give your opinions, I need that not to happen. Let me tell you why. Because it's to Katia's point, this film is so complex and so layered, and there's so many different elements that play into it, that asking me right after I saw it, I, can't, I personally could not even process it then. So asking the next day, I'm cool with, cause then it gives me the opportunity to really kind of figure out the film, see the film, you know, and this one, I really needed that time. Now there are some films that I could walk out of and I can give a 30 second, you know, like high level view, but this one, it was really hard for me to write down on that paper. Cause I was still trying to come to terms with a lot of things that happened. Um, Dev Patel is truly the star of this and shout out to Dev cause he's fine in this film. Like I was like, okay, Dev, like I, I see you, but also um, he just does something that's extraordinary, which like, I feel like in terms of his acting, there are a lot of scenes where it is him alone in the forest, you know, or 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 talking to like a, a four-legged uh, companion. And he has to do a lot of acting with his eyes. Like really, he's doing a lot of the work just with his mannerisms and it's so good. And I'm so glad that Katya brought up honor because that's really what this is a journey about. Seeking honor, understanding honor. What does it look like to get everything that you want out of life in terms of him, you know, on this quest to becoming a knight, but losing who he truly is in that foundation and everything that he wants to stand for. That's really what the full journey is, is about. And so the imagery is beautiful. I mean, the cinematography is gorgeous. Katya, when you say your screen looked like Tetris, I was kind of like, well, honestly, some of those fonts I really couldn't read. So <laughs> you know, my, daughter, my daughter came with me and she was like, I, I didn't know I what you said. Know so. what I did, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just figure it out. Because I was yes. and I had my glasses on and I still couldn't read it. 
Yeah, like some at some points when they, you know, are giving you some extra context with words, I was like, child, I want y'all to know I can't read this. So um, <laughs> I cannot yeah, see this font whatsoever. But it was an extraordinary um, film. And so, you know, I think that there are so many layers to it. I will say you got to stick with it. So, you know, I feel like in the very beginning, it comes off very fast and you're like super intrigued. The middle kind of evens out a little bit, but you really have to stick with it as he goes along this journey. Um, for me, I love that it included magic. You know, like um, it's not just a regular medieval uh, medieval film. You're getting magic. You know, you're getting um, action. You're getting a little bit of romance. You know, it, it had a lot of elements. And also, it was funny in a lot of parts. Like I was like, "What is happening here?" So, you know, um, I definitely, definitely enjoyed this one. Wow. So, so you guys said a couple of things that that ring well with me. First, that you have to stick with this film. You, you, you just, you have to. I thought what you just said, KB, actually is how I looked at it. The first part was so intriguing, right there in the middle, in the beginning. And then I started to like, okay, having to shake myself so I can stay with it in that middle part. When you say even out, it, it was actually a little bit uneven for me as it relates to the, the beginning, because I was really intrigued. I was like, I was hooked trying to understand. Well, wait, wait, wait a minute. What, what we, what do we have going here? I also like the magic that you talked about as well, and um, I think that the Patel was so interesting. Period, and he definitely makes this movie worth watching. I, I, I think what you said, Katia, about if you're looking for some like action and Dungeons and Dragons and all that, this is definitely not the movie for you. And for me, once he got away from the kingdom, uh, the, the the journey part was a little rock, was a little rocky for me. Just just just, but everything he did, I, I thought he acted so well in this, um, and I was so happy to see him in this kind of different role. That that a lot of times, as as people of color, we get kind of pigeonholed to what what roles we could play. So I was very very happy to kind of see him in something uh, very, very different. I will also say that, so so your point, KB, about when you come out the movie and they ask you these questions, I, I, I not only I had to marinate, I, I, I need to simmer. I need, I, this was one of those that I really had to think about. Okay, Reggie, you didn't walk out of this movie like, wow, that was a great movie. The way I walked out of the movie was, wow, death was pretty good in this, this see. He, he crushed this, but did I like the movie was the question that I came out and asked myself. And so I finally was able to come up with my little thing of what I want to say about this, this movie, my little quote. And it was that the green night was a little black because it's dark. It's a little gray because it's fuzzy. And it was a little yellow because there was some light at the end of the whole thing. And so in the end, for me, the spectrum of colors was a bit dizzying. It's worth watching, but I was a bit dizzy when I got out of seeing this film. I say, yeah. I, I say watch it, but it was a little bit dizzying for me. You know what? I, I kind of agree with what you're saying in the sense that it does take you on a ride, which again, I think is why we keep saying you have to stick with it because it is, it, it's ebbs and flows for, for sure. Like there are peaks and there are valleys, but you have to definitely stick with it on the ride. Katya? I do want to shout out, I want to make sure I say her name correctly. Sarita Shudhuri. She played uh, Dev's mom, and if you oh. remember Mississippi Masala, she played Denzel's a love interest. I'm so happy to see her in projects again because she's someone else that I really enjoy as an actress. And again, I'm the type of person like I like stuff like that intrigues you, and you can't like you're kind of like trying to figure it out, but just when you think you do, it takes you on a whole nother um, journey. Again, I love Dev. Yes, I'm with KB. His hair was, his beard game was strong and the hair department did what they needed to do to give him the, you know, the messy but still coiffed look. So shout out to them. Uh, I, I would definitely recommend this movie, but with a caveat where I would say, if you are a person that is not patient and doesn't like to 
think about things, you know, because some people be like, we are hour in, there better be something, but we have, we're not popping off. We're not, you know, the swords aren't coming out. Then this is not the movie for you. But if you are a deaf fan and you do enjoy going on a journey and trying to figure out who the good people are, who the bad people are, this is good magic, bad magic, then this is the film for you. But yeah, I yeah. definitely Yes. Totally, like totally this agree. is truly the dev show. So definitely watch it for the dev show. Yes. Totally agree. All right. Well, well, there we go. So that was the, the green night. Now we're going to get into being in the greens and the Amazon. And we're going to have my girl, KB, bring us in on this one. What, what do you think, KB? All right. Let's get into Jungle Cruise. Uh, big budget Disney film based on the ride with an insane plot, literally insane. Um, Jungle Cruise is basically about, you know, um, this woman, she's a scientist, her name is uh, Lily, and she is on the quest and on a mission to find essentially like the tree of life, this herb that can essentially heal anyone and anything and any ailment. She wants to save the world. That's her mission, right? So she uh, goes on this journey with her brother who shout out shout out to um jack whitehall who plays mcgregor because he had me rolling the whole film but um yes so you know she uh goes on this journey with her brother and they meet a riverboat captain named frank and that is the rock so you know as you know it's high action it's high adventure um i definitely feel like it's a family friendly film as they journey through the amazon to find this tree of life uh in order to to save the world what is clear in jungle cruise is they are definitely setting it up to be a franchise i will say that um that was clear throughout the film but um the rock truly 100 percent charismatic in this like listen he is so charismatic. It's not without problems because I was confused about him playing. A, and and Katya, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I was like, wait, is he playing a Latinx character in this? Like, I was I was so confused and also the explanation. And I was like, wait, what is happening? But um, he is very charismatic. I think his chemistry with Emily Blunt as Lily, their back and forth was really intriguing. Quite frankly, um, and as y'all can probably tell, I, I don't need romance in films. I'm fine with just keeping at the venture. <laughs> and so um, the adventure parts were, were good, traveling down to Amazon and going to do some things. But I will say it is a true comedy. Like there are so many parts that I really was dying laughing at, like what is happening? And so even Frank's character and his jokes, I was like, now child, come on, what is happening? I felt like Reggie probably liked those jokes that Frank was uh, kicking out of this movie. <laughs> Uh, all right. So since you mentioned me, I'll, I'll jump in here. Is that The Rock, is, you, I mean, you just said it. The Rock was, he's that likable, affable person, and you can't help but like it, like, like him. And then the chemistry between the two of them, I thought was really good as well. These are the things that I like. Um, it, it was really, I like the fact that you, that they didn't like each other, but maybe they really did like each other. That that, that 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 friction went back and forth. But this was this. It's really funny that this is based on a ride because it, it felt like an, a a ride in an amusement park. When you get to the first scene, that is exactly what happens. And I wanted to be on that boat. I was like, now that's pretty cool with the surprises and near death experiences and all that. And you know nothing's gonna happen to you because it's a ride, but you, you're going to go ahead and you go through it. So, so I, I really like that. I, I will say, you know, to use a pun that Emily was, uh, may I say blunt? She was like a bee that you couldn't get rid of. I wanted her, to, I mean, I'm like, like her, her personality, but it, it worked. It worked for them to go back and forth that she was, she had independence. She was determined. She had all that stuff and how they flipped the gender roles in a way for her, her and her brother. I think was a really good thing. He was more prissy and needing everything that, you know, needing all the comforts of life, but she was like a go-getter. So I, I, I think that that was, that was good. What, what I will say though, is that I had a problem with the film. Is that the problem with the film for me is it, it gave you time to think along the journey. When you're on the ride, you need to just keep going. Just hit thing, hit thing. You shouldn't have to think. 
And there were things in this movie that don't make sense. Now, some people are going to say, come on, Reggie, stop. Stop it. Stop it. Why are you trying to dissect the film? But there were things in this movie that didn't make sense. And the biggest one for me was this overall story of something being stole from the Native people. Is that on one hand, you had this group of folks who wanted to use it for themselves. And then you had Emily Blunt's character who wanted to use it for good. But really? all these other people know what's best for something that belonged to the natives for how it should be used? Seriously? Because that's rooted in real history, they should have proceeded with caution on this thing because there is some, some real stuff there. And for me, it was, it was mildly offensive to go there with this native stuff. Give me a different story. But that aside, from a family perspective, I think this works. I, I, I do think it works. I think there are people laughing, there's people having fun, all that type of stuff. It was, for me, this was like a, uh, it was a pirate story. It was a, a love story. It had so many things thrown in there. I think that overall the ride is is good to, to go on. But, but, but after I got through the ride, um, there was this, um, this thought about, well, what was the message? If you ignore the message, if you ignore the plot, if you ignore where the whole thing is going, and just you just like, I just had a good ride, you'll enjoy this film. Uh, but those were some of the problems I had. Constantly. Let me say something, Reggie, because you bring up a good point. 98% of this film, I was saying, what? Like, literally 98%. I was like, who? But did you get off the ride and you were like, hmm, it, okay. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like it was 98% of the time I was confused about what's happening. So you do bring up a, a good point. And again, I'm still confused how, you know, the rock who is a champion of, of being black and, you know, Pacific Islander who like love to let people know, which I appreciate. I don't know how we got here either. So I was still confused about that, trying to figure out how we got to that as well. And uh, but you're 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 right. There are a lot of plot holes, but I don't think people will care, Reggie, because I think that the kids will just be like, OK, you know, this is a high action, whatever. But there are a lot of plot holes like and half the time I was like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. Katya, come in. Ooh, there were so many problems. All right. Since you all talked about the bad, I feel the same way that KB was for a man that has worked very hard to make sure that his culture, Samoan culture, um, South Pacific culture gets portrayed accurately, that actors of that background, as in Hobbs and Shaw, when they went down to Hawaii, play those roles, he completely dropped the ball on this. Let's start. They're in Brazil, correct? Or did I miss that part? They're in Amazon. Amazon. They're in Brazil, yes. They're in Brazil. The the Amazon does go to other parts of South America, but this particular place in Brazil, right? Paul Giamatti's character, I didn't quite get because he's Italian, but cool and also grossly underused. Paul Giamatti is way too good of an actor to be playing that little sidekick role, but maybe he wanted to check or maybe he just wanted to work with these people Take that off the ch- take that off the table. The conquistadors are Spaniards. They did get that particular Spanish correct, but they never ever came to the Amazons because the Portuguese conquered Brazil, not the Spaniards, other parts of South South America, which made no sense. And I get that it's not the History Channel, but since you're going to tell the story. It, that is just ridiculously, and I'm with Reggie, super, super careless. We're in 2021. Do better. Um, the Pasquale also ridiculously underused. Like, why cast these am- this amazing talent and give them nothing to do? And I get what Pascal did it because it enables him to be introduced to an audience that might not be otherwise familiar with him because he's done very specific type of roles. He's too good of an actor also to be playing a conquistador that barely does anything, right? Don't even get me started on native people because I don't, who were they supposed to be? 
They had no identity. They had no tribal thing. And then the rock starts speaking some gibberish, which I'm like, what language is this supposed to be? Right? Um, it is, again, very offensive and disrespectful. We can have fun without doing this. This is not the 1950s. I literally wrote in my review, it felt very black facious. Like when white people used to play Native Americans and that idea of Native Americans is to do this, that's what it felt like to me. And I was like, you're better than this. You know better than this. And I'm looking at you, Emily Blunt, that you signed on for this. You have a whole group of people of predominantly white people and nobody had, you know, and nobody was there to say, mm, we can make a really fun movie. And the comparisons that we were sold on, this is supposed to be like Romancing the Stone, Indiana Jones, these movies all accomplish that without being utterly offensive. Do you know what I mean? And and that really took me out of this movie. Now, again, if we're in, I don't even know what freaking century is supposed to be on, but last time I checked, the Portuguese was still speaking Portuguese. If that's supposed to be the, the colonizer, again, why are we speaking Spanish? Portuguese and Spanish are two different things. The countries are neighbors, but again, that was just totally unnecessary. And then um, put more ice on the wound. Um, there, He didn't hire one Brazilian actor to play any of those people. And this thing is taking place. Latin people are not interchangeable like Legos. You know what I mean? There's a specific titty. You went out of your way to make sure that there is a specific Spanish, which is Castellano, being spoken by the conquistadors. But then you drop the ball and everything else. So that. But... I don't want to be that. I don't want to be, you know, bitter Sally today. The one people group of people that I did like out of this mess is Jack Whitehall, who KB mentioned. I love the fact that he was like he brought his dinner jacket on this 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 congress. He was like, if I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna look good. I'm gonna have my tennis racket, I'm gonna have my golf, everything, right? And then it was a little bit awkward. I'm like, we're going to commit to have an LGBTQ plus character. Let him be LGBTQ plus. It's like trying to be a little bit pregnant. I I, I respect the fact that you went there, but then commit to it. Uh, Jesse Plemons, to me, was probably the only person that got an accent right in this entire freaking movie. Uh... Jesse Plemons, I love that scene. I don't want to give it away between him and Jack Whitehall. Where he's like, what? What do you say? He's like, da, 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 da. he embody that that did remind me of an old TV show in a good way, Hogan's Heroes, like Clink, right? And I thought he really committed to the ridiculousness of his character, the outfit, the hair, the way that he engaged. I thought he, I wanted more of him. Like we're, we didn't have, we didn't have enough of him. And he was for me, the comic relief. So, My time for this film was, you should have kept the ride at the park. Not wow. on. Mm, wow. wow. So, oh my gosh. So, so is this, is, is, so it's not a watch it for you? It's not a watch it for me, but I can see families taking it, their kids to it. But I feel like you need to have a caveat and say, this is all of this right here is foolery. Don't take, this is not a history lesson. So it's really interesting because my, my last statement in my review is that this is a fun and exciting ride, which, which requires one to ignore the plot ignore the messages and ignore the impact beyond the amusement. So I'm saying it's a mile watch it for me. I think family, I think people will have fun watching it, however, because if you if you don't overthink it, ignore all the stuff and be like, oh yeah, they went from here to here to there. It's a mile watch it for me. What, what, what for you? What say you, KB? Yeah, it's going to be a mild watch it for me. And let me just say, thank you, Katya, for bringing up Jesse Plemons, who has been a star in my eyes since Friday Night Lights. And he is an exceptional talent, truly, truly, and does make this film in a lot of ways. So shout out to Jesse for sure. I think you watch for Jesse and Jack, watch for J&J, because truly those two are it. The Rock, again, is his normal charismatic self. Like, I do feel like this role is not a stretch for him. Nope. Um, in the sense that, like, this is kind of his usual space of being able to give you the charm, the valor, you know, um, the save the day. Like, he knows how to do that well, and he does that well in here. But to everyone's point, you know, the historical impact, and I'll be honest with y'all, truthfully, 
when they were doing this whole storyline with the natives, one, I didn't even know that they were serious because remember in the beginning when he had yeah. those actors yeah, like sure. playing natives. So I was like, I didn't even realize that that was a serious point of the plot because the plot is so up and down and it goes so many places and he had these actors. So I was like, oh, these the same actors? Like, you don't really know because they don't inherently make it clear. Yeah. And so um, I think that you just have to be weary of that when you're watching it. Like, you're going to ask some questions and you're going to be like, what kind of journey am I going on? Because it is truly a journey, but it's a mild watch it for J&J. &J, um, and it's a mild watch it, you know, if you just want to start off kind of on a wild ride and you want to see some adventure. And to everyone's point, if you have a family, because, you know, people are looking for things to watch. So cool. Cool. All right. Well, that's that's it. What it really was. This is what I wrote. The Jungle Cruise should have stayed in the park. Ooh, Ooh y'all. Girl. Ooh. And yeah, I, yeah. I am not a girl who, right. I am not part of the hate crew. I'm not a girl who usually likes to brand things. Like I said, it's my positives were Jack and Jesse. Cause again, I don't like to be bitter Sally in a 600 word review. Cause then people are like, Ooh. and I even, I was reading it and I was like, mm, yeah, well, but that's how I felt. Sorry. Yeah. I, 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 I was a little bitter. I, I wasn't bitter Sally, but I was bitter Saul. Uh, anyway, we're going to, we're going to move on. <laughs> we, we, we're going to move not on. Not you. Not when my man is in the hospital. <laughs> right. Right. Like Saul, Saul is Saul in the hospital. Saul, though. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> My bad, my bad, my bad. Um, but he's right. recovering, so. So let's get to let's get to quick hits. Um, and on quick hits, we are gonna put on a timer today because we gonna keep it moving. And um, so the first one that I wanted to talk about for quick hits is this whole thing about the. Let me put on. Let me let me let me share the screen so you guys can. Uh, so you guys can see this timer because the timer is on today. And here we go. All right. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was house party. Do we need one and do we care? No. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, I was going to start to just say no. You know, I, I enjoy the original house party franchise. Like I thought they did something in the 90s that, you know, was dope. But do we need it? No. Um, well, I personally don't. Now, will I watch it when it comes out? Probably. But like, I'm not saying that, you know, like I'll probably still watch it, but I don't necessarily need it. Yeah, I I, I, I don't want it. I, I don't want it. I I, I, I really like what, what was there. And one of the things that Katya talks about a lot is, can we get a new story? Can we get something new? And I, I want some things just to be sacred. It, it was good. It was funny. It worked. And by the time they got the house party 15, it was time for it to go. I know they didn't get the house party 15, but I'm saying, come on, don't make a remake of this one. I, I, I don't want it, but I am happy for, for the people who are going to be working in it, but I'm not feeling it. Katya. No, give us something else. There are plenty of stories to tell about kids in high school or kids in college. We tired. We seen this. It worked. Bye. I yeah. really thought Katya's whole answer was just going to be no. <laughs> she she did pretty good, though. She did pretty good. All right, so I'm going to reset the timer. Our new one is on Octavia Butler's so Fledgling. Another one of these is going to make it to the big screen uh, uh, for television and film. And uh, you guys excited? I'm going to tell you I am. I am excited about anything Octavia Butler. I am so happy that that and, and this one is one of those really interesting ones um, because it it this was the one where she completed the book I think like one year before before she died and it's about a young girl suffering from am, am, amnesia but ultimately realizes her horrifying reality that she's actually a fifty three year old genetically modified vampire I'm like bring it on bring it on bring it on Hercules thoughts Katya. Um, I believe Issa Rae is the producer, correct? Yeah, you got one? Issa Rae yeah. in there, JJ Abrams, yes. Okay, I'm here for this. This is what we're talking about. Some new stories, and most importantly, highlighting Black writers' work. And I'm gonna use KB's phrase, hire some new faces, give new people an opportunity to help tell the story. So I'm here for it. 
KB. Yeah, listen, I'm rooting for everything Octavia Butler. So I'm all the way in with this. Uh, I have not read this particular book. I am going to because this is so intriguing um, and such a wild ride. But, you know, when we say that we want to see ourselves represented in new fashions, this is what we mean. A genetically modified vampire, like, this is the sci-fi, you know, field of dreams for us. So, yes, absolutely. Like, I cannot wait. All right. Ex excellent. All right. Reset, reset the timer. You guys are doing good. See, I knew I had to put y'all on the timer so we can keep get through all these subjects. So this one is gonna be uh, Leslie Odom Jr. and Ellen Burst to star in the new Exorcist film trilogy. I, I'm actually very intrigued about this. This is one that I wanna see. It's a trilogy and it's gonna be, it's gonna switch it up a little bit from the original Exorcist, but it'll have some of that, some of that same foundation. Interested? Not interested? Yes. Yes. If they give us a new story, I am happy for Leslie to be able to do this type of a role because he's not singing in it. You know what I mean? So he gets to show you that he is very much a, a capable actor. And um, but he is my little. Don't give us a remake of Linda coming back. We don't seen that one. Give us a different journey in a different thing. And if you tie, I can understand tying Ellen Burstyn in there because she might be the expert to why this child or whomever is possessed. All right, KB. Y'all know I'm not going to watch this. Y'all know I have not no. watched Exorcist. Y'all know I do not do her. So shout out to them for doing this. Shout out to Leslie for getting another role and another job. I'm not actually going to watch it. That's not because I think it's going to be bad. It's strictly because I do not like to be terrified and I do not like to be afraid. But shout out to them. You know, like, congrats. So this is what we're going to do, KB. Katya and I are going to come to your town. We're going to come and we're going to go to a screening with you. We're going to put you in between. You're going to sit in between the two of us because you're going to watch this. You you're going to watch this. We're gonna send us a cash app to make no. two hundred dollars so she can go to therapy to cover. <laughs> right. Happen. I'm like absolutely not. I will yes. not be watching That's this. What is but shout out to them. Yes. Like, like no, no. He All right. is. <laughs> but All I right, understand because I'm not watching Candyman. Fine. All right. So now, Candyman is one that I will watch because it's more of a like psychological. You know, like The Exorcist. Y'all, we not. I'm not gonna fool with these demons. Yeah. So the answer is no. No, no, no. The Exorcist. I'm still scared from watching that as a little kid. So that 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 was scary. I mean, you trying to turn my head around? I, I, uh, uh, I, I, I. That that was scary. And I. And if we had the CGI that we had that we got today that we had back then, it probably would have been even much more. You scary. know what? My theory on that is: leave the child, leave the house to her. She can have the house, do whatever oh, she wants to do. Right, run out right, the house. Like, we got that attached to the house. God bless. You know, if it, if it works out, we'll send you an owl. But baby, you got this house. You and the priest, we we move it on. We're gonna have some normal kids. I, I'm That's how you. I feel about all the horror. Just, <laughs> I don't need to be here. Y'all can have it. Period. <laughs> I'm, feeling, I'm feeling all of you guys on that. All right, moving to the next one. Let's talk about. I, I want to touch base on on a couple of deaths. Um, that happen in, in the industry that we have not had a chance to talk talk about. And the first one I, I want to just mention was uh, Rick Aiello, uh, and he he was in uh, Spike Lee's uh, "Do the Right Thing" with his with his father. And a lot of people uh, knew Danny more than they knew the, the knew the son. But he passed away, and he was in a, a number of things as well. So I just wanted to uh, mention that. Uh, you guys remember him at all? Now when I see him, he played the police officer, the police officer that got radio. Look, oh, geez, oh, man, like sixty-five. He was he was only sixty-five. Very young. He he's very very young. Um, I mean, he was in a number of things. Obviously, you know, Twenty One Jump Street, L.A. Law, NYPD Blue, Tales from the Crypt, uh, Tex uh, Walker, Texas Ranger. So I mean, this was he was an accomplished actor. Obviously, I remember him specifically from. Uh, do the right thing and thought we should uh, mention him as well. All right, want to move on to Biz Marquee. Look, they say he's just a friend, uh, you know? That that was the dude. 
But a lot of people don't know he had a number of um, movies. He has about well a number mm -hmm. of acting credits. Had at least uh, thirty one acting credits and was in a number of things. And he has a one one movie coming up. I, I wonder if that was finished on his uh, Char. Um, so he's uh, he had that coming out as well. But he was in uh, the Meteor Man, uh, Sharknado Two, Men in Black Two, and then obviously he had some musical credits for many uh, films as well. But uh, just wanted to say R I P to Biz Marquis. That that if nobody that song stays in your head, right, KB? Oh, always. And you know, speaking of like you know people who die young, he was only fifty seven. So you know it's so so sad. But um, a true talent, and you know, you see him pop up in a lot of places that you never even, you know, uh, thought possible when it comes to the acting side of things. So yeah, you know, R.I.P. Biz Marquis. Well, and, and go ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. Say this: when I was talking to Jeff, I said to him, "Let's have the discussion, if you don't mind, because we both come from hip hop and we're close in age." I said to him, "It has not been lost on me." Forty six. 47, 48, 50, 51, 52, 53. People, and he knows these people a lot. He said all these people that died were friends of him and it's all healthcare related. There is, we need to do better. We need to start taking care of our elder statements. We need to stop saying that hip hop is a young person's uh, genre. It's not because we're losing a lot of these folks because you know, they, they're, the money slowed down and there's no type of infrastructure like there is in blues and rock and roll for healthcare. So you've got these grown men that are continuously working, going from gig to gig, because if they don't work, they don't eat. So while you're doing that, you're not taking the best care of yourself. No, and true. you yeah. know what I mean? Going to the doctor, we need to start talking about combat jacks. May he rest in peace. Uh, final words were like, go get a colonoscopy because he didn't end time. And it spread by the time he figured it out. And it really hit his family hard. Like his child, his, 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 his widow had to take his oldest out of college. You know, I believe he was at NYU and because the money was not there. So we, we got it's not sexy, but we got to start talking about that. I'm really glad. I'm going to say, I'm going to say two, it's two things though. So it, it's that stream but it's also the system in which healthcare is built in this country. And it's also the fact that we as black and brown people are not often listened to. So it's also the fact that the standards for the age group for the colonoscopy should be lowered for particular groups that are at risk like us. Um, and so like we, we it, it showed with Chadwick as well, right? Chadwick was super young and it showed there. So like, it's a whole yeah. lot of different layers that go into it as well. But, you know, also, even if you're doing everything right, the odds of you finding a doctor who will actually listen to your needs and listen to you when you say you don't feel well is still slim. Yeah, I, I'm I going to. I'm, I'm, not to cut right you off, but I don't want to do any more GoFundMes after people are in the ground. That's too late. I'd rather do the GoFundMe and be like, hey, let's use this money and let's work with black doctors that do give a darn about getting our people checked out and taken care of. I want to yeah. start being proactive because like I said, if we got within this year, we lost like six dudes. Like how many no. more are we going to lose? No, there's no no, no doubt about it. I, we got it. We got to uh, keep it going. Uh, I, but I'm having that same issue. Got some the, going to the doctor. Are they listening? Are they not? So totally glad that you guys brought that up. I, I want to mention Charlie Robinson, particularly for you, Katia, because uh, he's a veteran stage and screen actor. Uh, and I know you know this dude uh, who played it in Night Court. He died um, at the age of 75. At least he made it made it there. But that's still pretty young, you know. 75 mm -hmm. is not old as well. So just thought that uh, uh, I, I I remember. Love him on Night Court. I love. Because he was the straight man and he had that sarcastic humor. Do you know what I mean? And I believe he joined the show after Roz passed. And um, unfortunately, yeah, someone else had died young, right? But he was a perfect fit because the, sh the show was more or less in, in, in established. And also someone who had a really long career, you know, pro yeah. um, beyond night court, stage, played different types of people. And, um, you know, I'm okay with 70 not to wish death on anybody. But again, we got to start giving our people their flowers before, you know, they go. Start yeah. acknowledging our elder statements who who made a lot of these roles and possibilities 
possible for for young black actors to get these checks. You got a minute. You got a minute. KG. Now, um, Reggie, first off, I'm going to clown you talking about what I put him on here for Katia. First off, I'm a huge Night Court fan, so let's stop there. All right. Um, my, bad. my bad. I'm we sorry, start but there. Katia love that film and stay. I mean, stay. Listen, I know, I know, I know why you did it, but I'm just going to correct you because, because you I am did. a huge I... fan of Night Court and I have been since I was a little girl. So, right. um, you know, this is a sad loss. Yeah. Um, but, you know, to, to Katya's point, you know, I do feel like 75 is still young, but grateful for 75 years, you know, to be able to to walk the earth and do what he loved and, and be surrounded by family. So just, you know, rest in peace. All right. Well, we're, we're really at the end. Uh, so we're going to try to get in one big issue when we talk. Now we're at the issues and on the issue, we're going to try to just do one of these. So let me take my timer off and we'll go straight to talking about um, Scarlett Johansson. She's suing Disney for breach of contract over Black Widow. And the the issue is, is that she's like, look, this was supposed to be released in the box office and I was supposed to get a cut of the box office. But the fact that you put it on streaming means that you just cut into my money. We got a problem. Thoughts, you guys? Well, let's tell, if we're going to tell her side, we got to tell Disney side. Disney side is saying that she did also get a cut of the pay-per-view and I mean, on demand and on demand did really, really well. So Disney is saying that they are fulfilling their contract obligations. And on top of that, that there was an extra unexpected thing that happened, which is a pandemic, which they're not responsible for. So they have to do what was best for the thing. Me personally, this white woman's problem. Cause you know what? When black women are out here fighting to get a check period after being in the business for 20, 30 years, she don't say nothing. So you know what, Scar Joe, I wish you amazing things, but am I getting out there on social media talking about giving her her money? No. Well, so so I'm I'm totally opposite on you on, on this one. Is that this is a system thing and the system exploiting individuals? Is that Disney's going to say to to her, well, you got a cut of the money, but you didn't get the cut of the money that you were supposed to get a cut of, and then they're going to say, well, hey, you supposed to be, uh, you're supposed to be sensitive to the fact that it's a pandemic. Well, you weren't sensitive to the fact it was a pandemic. Otherwise, you would release it later on. So you chose the date in which it was going to be released, and she did not. The contract says, so it, it, it amazes me that, that companies can just say, well, you know, we, we had some extenuating circumstances, so we had to change it. Just let the actor do that. I'm always for the players. I'm not for I'm not for the game. I'm for the players. And so that's how I feel about that. What's your thought on that, KB? Um, you know, I don't really have too many thoughts. I mean, I guess to Katya's point, this this feels like wealthy people problems to me. Um, also considering the fact that you know. Uh, Disney did release a statement saying she made $20 million. And I was like, oh, okay, girl. So um, I understand both sides of the issue, though. I will say that. So a contract is still a contract, right? So I understand that the terms of that contract should be upheld. Um, and I understand that that's what she would have wanted. I also understand Disney's side in that, like, we are in a global pandemic. Um, that was not feasible. So we did a workaround. I think the bigger issue is how talent contracts will be going forward. And I think that they should like bundle, include, package, pad them with streaming in general, because I do think it is the way, regardless of the pandemic or not, I think that there should be some component of them getting that as well as box office numbers. Um, I will say I, I was surprised by Disney's statement because it did feel personal like in a lot of ways like when i was reading it it felt very personal in the sense that you know they're like listen this is what we did um this is how we're doing going forward so um it it also semi feels like that that professional relationship will no longer happen in the future because of this um that is definitely something or at least that's the way it felt to me kind of reading this article and reading both sides and seeing where they stand so you know, um, I, I just think there's a larger issue at large when it comes to con contracts and, and how we view streaming and those budgets and right. also theatrical releases, um, you know, kind of with this. 
that's that's going to be the biggest issue. Uh, just just as an FYI, I, I saw a report this morning that the WB did much different than what um, uh, what Disney did. Is that they recognized and they paid money up front, not on the streaming. They just paid more money up front based upon mm -hmm. what the contract would have been. So there are companies saying that they understand that. And also to your point about uh, contracts is that a lot of other actors are saying the same thing and some black actors as well saying heck you know that if that was our contract and then you either give me some more money up front and then we're done and you can do whatever you want to do with it but you just can't be saying oh, okay extenuating circumstances voice our contract so i mean that's the issue for that hey let's get to the last segment because i know we got to get out of here the last segment is uh the what what uh we got we call it spotlight and and my spotlight is is something that i am not even watching but i'm watching i can't believe that i'm i'm, I'm watching this so my wife is watching love island <laughs> And I'm walking, I I, I'm walking, I'm walking yeah. into this thing and, and it's on every night. So I'm not watching, watching it, but as I'm walking through, I'm seeing this, this, this quadrangle triangle thing of Cisco cash. Uh, I, I'm forgetting the other girl's name and Charlie It's like four of them and, and, and it's going back and forth, back and forth. And it is actually like now I gotta watch tonight. I I, I don't even want to. It, it is the craziest thing. This dude Cisco acting crazy, talking about he likes this one girl, and then all of a sudden he likes this other girl. He leaves the one girl, goes to the next girl, and now the other girl gets another another dude. But now she he comes back and say I want to be. I, I, I'm actually a little bit hooked on this, just a little bit, because I need to know what's gonna happen to Cash in this whole thing. Is she gonna go with Cisco or not? So that that that's my spotlight. What you got, KB? So my spotlight's gonna be Gossip Girl, the new reboot. Um, I don't know how to explain this. Like we're four episodes in. I don't love it, but I can't turn it off. Like I, I don't know. It, it's really that kind of conundrum of just being in the center where you're like, I don't hate this, but I don't love it. But now I need to see more to figure out what's going on. So listen, I will say this. You know, we're in episode four. If you haven't watched it, this on you. But let me just say, I, having the two black women, two out of three, because there are only three black women on the show, having the two out of three black women uh, go at it, toe to toe, head to head. And they're also sisters. I'm like, this is a choice. Like, <laughs> why do we choose to go down this path for the two of them to be, you know, going back and forth? And they are their half sisters on the show who have just met for the first time, which also that's not a spoiler. They have been talking about that the whole series. So it really is just like, wait, what? Hey, Y'all gonna have to go back and forth? But um, it looks a little different from that original Gossip Girl in the sense that, you know, things have changed now. And what has changed is technology. And we have way more of it. And being a bully and being a mean girl with technology is very different. Now, I'm not going to lie to y'all. They pretty much reveal who Gossip Girl is in the first episode. So this is also a choice because they flipped it. You know, we had to wait all the way to the end to figure out who Gossip Girl is. So I'm curious to see how that shifts change, to how that shifts and change and that dynamic works moving ahead. But listen, I'm on episode four. I think we have... Uh, how many episodes on the show? Is it six or eight? I'm not sure, but I need to get to the end so that I can fully process it. All right, yeah. all right. Well, last word for you, Katya. What what what's the spotlight? Nine days, nine days. Love, love this movie. Got a chance to revisit it. Finally, got a chance to speak to Edson. We got to have our Brazilian moment and talk about our growing up and food and God and all that stuff. Is a very special movie. I I got a chance to to kind of like dive in, and it is a little bit of what I thought where it where it hits culturally for us, you know, uh, family, faith, huge part of who we are as Brazilians. It's been ingrained with us. Um, good optimism. You know, Brazilian people are very optimistic. Things can be like very bad. And Brazilian people be like, we're going to make some food. We're going to pray on it and we're going to push through. And you'll be like, but it's really bad. You know what I mean? And Brazilian people be like, we know, but it's going to get better. Uh, so that. And on the caveat, I have to say Rebecca Anders winning the silver and the all around. And that's not taking away anything from Sue Lee 
but what a wonderful story. Like I literally like was watching, I got a chance to see the Brazilian announcers do it. And it's so Brazilian to people like, oh, oh, everybody like right there with her. Like we were voting with her floor routine. And the story is so important because it's a black girl that grew up in the favelas that had to leave her house because Brazil doesn't have the infrastructure that the United States has concerning training, uh, support, the list goes on and on. It's still a young sport. She had three knee surgeries. She had three surgeries. And, um, you know, her coach just stuck by that. So it's a win-win for her and it's a win. And there were other medalists that won on the world stage. And, you know, and her idol was a young black woman that won world at, excuse me, gold medal at worlds in floor. And just to see her, see Rebecca, and it's important, we always talk about representation matters, to see her up there shining with her beautiful brown skin and, you know, her cute bow and all of that and be dazzled and just out there through these very hard times. The pandemic is 10 times worse in Brazil because our president is a moron. But it just uplifted the whole country. It's a feel good Excellent. story. And she has no errors about herself. You know, her message was, I'm really happy I got to do it with my coach. And I loved more than anything, I don't know about anybody else, that the girls were taking selfies together, that the girls were hugging each other because they all worked really, really hard and they know, you know, the sacrifices you got to make to get there. And I wish we did that more in sports instead of like being the mean girl. You can so be a champion and still say, I see you, I support you. And shout out again to, I'm with Reggie. You know, Simone, you don't owe us a damn thing. There we go. Look, look, we got to go. That is the show. I'm Reggie Pond, The Real Critic. This is The Real Critic Roundtable, where we come to discuss, debate, and have some fun. We did all of that. And guess what, guys? We'll see you guys next time. Bye.